Meghan's Invictus debut, pregnant Duchess wears an Antonio Berardi tuxedo dress and steals the show at Harry's Games with her speech praising athletes' unshakable bond. The Duchess of Sussex thanked the packed-out closing ceremony of the Invictus Games as part of their last engagement in Australia as she and Prince Harry prepare to head out to New Zealand. In a short and personal speech to the 12,000-strong crowd in the Quidditch Bank Arena, Meghan thanked organizers and athletes for welcoming her and to the Invictus family. She praised the unshakable bond between servicemen and women and the camaraderie and close-knit sense of community she experienced at the Games. Wearing a stunning green Antonio Berardi tuxedo dress, Meghan said it was such an honor to be at the closing ceremony with her husband Prince Harry. She praised the athletes' camaraderie and the close-knit sense of community that had been born out of the Invictus spirit. I am truly so grateful to be a part of this with each and every one of you, and I'm not sure if many of you know this, but a few years ago before I met my husband, I had the incredible honor of meeting troops deployed all over the world from the UK, Afghanistan and several other countries," she said. In traveling to these military bases, I was given a very special glimpse into the lives of those who serve our countries. I was able to see the unshakable bond between servicemen and women on the ground together but at the same time to feel the palpable longing for family and friends while deployed. She told the crowd about her experience with athletes during the games and how she had been genuinely moved by some of their stories. I have witnessed the most amazing support networks that surround competitors, and I've had the privilege of meeting several of these family and friends. The Novak family from Chicago is a prime example of this very thing. When their son, Ryan, suffered a severe injury leaving him paralyzed from the waist down, doctors said he would never be able to walk again, but after speaking to his mom, Carrie, it was clear that it was through Ryan's strength of spirit and with the unwavering support of his parents that he was able to prove all of those doctors wrong. Not only has Ryan competed in sailing, swimming and athletics this week, but when Harry and I saw him at the finish line of the sailing competition, he literally jumped into our boat with dexterity and ease by the way, to give both of us a hug. Seeing Ryan's mum on the water that day, waving a flag to cheer him on was a moment I will never forget. The support system on the ground here in Invictus is something unlike any other because it's not just cheering on your own, but realizing that by the end of this week, your own becomes everyone in the Invictus family. The Duchess, 37, thanked the crowd and was followed by a performance from the Kingdom Choir the gospel choir that sang at Harry and Meghan's wedding. Later Prince Harry took the stage to rapturous applause. He opened his relaxed speech by saying hi guys and told veterans he was humbled and inspired by your determination, your service, and your sense of humor. In a moving tribute to competitors, he said the games was made up of ordinary people doing extraordinary things who have exceeded every expectation. He added, no challenge is too difficult to overcome. The Duke of Sussex, 34, then introduced singer Allo Black to close the ceremony as David Beckham, who was with his sons Romeo and Cruz but without his wife Victoria, cheered from the stands. Meghan turned heads in tuxedo inspired Antonio Berardi halter neck in a green hue with a buttoned wrap detail around the waist that perfectly skimmed her growing baby bump. She accessorized with a crescent-shaped clutch bag and added a dazzling touch to the ensemble with statement earrings beneath her delicate chignon while Harry looked dapper in a light grey suit and white shirt. The couple earlier returned to Cindy just in time to watch the final day of the Games before heading to New Zealand for the last leg of their Commonwealth tour. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex arrived at the wheelchair basketball final just after the match started at 2.10 p.m., receiving a standing ovation from the crowd. After the final whistle, pregnant Meghan went on court to give the Netherlands and USA players their medals and one cheeky Dutch player kissed her on the cheek. The bold move was technically a breach of protocol because the correct way for men to greet a member of the royal family is with a neck bow, from the head only but informal Meghan touched the player on the shoulder and smiled as he kissed her. The Duchess was glowing in a $550 maroon crepe knit wrap top by Australian designer Scanlon Theodore. She wore a Remembrance Day poppy on her left side and paired the top with black tapered trousers and high heels. Beckham, who also attended the athletics on Friday night, was accompanied by his son Romeo, 16, but was without his wife. Victoria Beckham. The couple handed out the gold and silver medals after the match, 
which was won by the U.S. team 29-17. Megan bent down to loop the medals over the American players' necks and shook their hands alongside Harry. The royal couple will later attend the closing ceremony where they will both make speeches, as Harry did at the opening a week ago. Harry, who created the games for wounded veterans after his time in the British Army, will likely take time out to meet some of the 500 competitors from 18 countries, as he did last weekend. The couple's afternoon star to the weekend followed a late Friday night for the pregnant Duchess where they attended the Australian Geographic Society Gala Awards at the Shanghai Law Hotel. Meghan dazzled the ball in an $18,000 black and white Oscar de Laurent cocktail dress and accepted a toy wombat and numbat as gifts for her upcoming baby. Harry accepted an award for outstanding contribution to global conservation on behalf of his grandmother Queen Elizabeth II, and made an impassioned speech about the plight of the world's forests. We cannot stand by and let our wildlife disappear from the earth and our fish from the seas. I think we can agree tonight that there cannot be any more excuses, he said. The event was just hours after their plane aborted its landing into Sydney Airport. Their Qantas charter flight from Tonga a Boeing 737, pulled up from the runway seconds before touching down. Its pilot, Nigel Rosser, explained over the Tannoy system that another plane on the runway had been slow to roll and the two aircraft were too close so he decided to abort the landing. 